Uh, I guess, first of all, I intend to do the same as last meeting, uh, not turn on the chat room. And if we get Zoom bombed, I would just uh, immediately adjourn the meeting and Brian can shut it down. And I guess, uh, is there any changes or additions to the agenda as presented? I wanted to add two proclamations we can take up later in the meeting. But does anybody have anything else? I, I wanted to return to the subject at the house on the corner of School Street and 100 C and what, uh, what further information we might have or. Okay. That. Anyone else? No. Okay, not hearing any. Are we prepared to approve the meeting minutes for September 21st, 2020? Were these the ones that we were asking for the changes? No. No, no. these were not. Okay. What's the board's pleasure? There are two sets of minutes for, for that date. Um, are you talking about the health meeting minutes and the select board meeting? Uh, I have not separated them out in the agenda description. Right. Uh, but you're right, there are two minutes. Well, that should probably be noted. Uh, whether you want to approve it in a slate or not, we should have that noted. We are approving one or both of the meeting minutes for September 21st. Probably those who are there for the health board meeting should approve theirs and then the rest of the board could go on to the other ones. I, I have a suggested change for the, uh, or an inquiry on the health meeting minutes. So I, I would move the minutes first and then go into the change. Okay. Health board. Are you, you're so moving. Do we have a yes. second? Yes. Second. Okay. And any discussion? I am wondering in, on the, uh, in number two, paragraph one, two, three, four, five, where Willie Noyes is talking about, uh, my, I'm, this is a question of hearing. I thought he said the deficiencies will be corrected. This says will not be corrected. Hmm. Anybody have better recollection? We're on the um, 21st, Doug, is that correct? Yes. All right. Give me the page again, please. It's on the first page. Okay. And it's uh, paragraph two, review emergency health order. And it's the fifth paragraph down, which starts out, Willie said the power was shut off. There's so many minutes that picking through them on the website here. I would have to look at the tape to be positive on that. I think he said that he would correct them, but that was what I put into my brain because I understood that he was, uh, you know, understood the process that he was in, that he was going to correct it, and then he would sell it. Um, that's what I understood. But, you know, this is Zoom and it should be checked. Donna, do you have any recollection? Uh, Donna? Oh, well, I, I, I thought that I heard him say that they wouldn't be corrected. That was why I put that in. Um, but I guess I, I could be wrong. I um, guess we could go back and listen to the recording and see. Did, did you hear that? Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we did. Oh, Thank okay. you, Donna. What's the board's pleasure? Sorry, Eric, what are we talking about? Sorry. Uh, we're talking about the dog hearing. And oh. as you and Mike were not there. Uh, Mouse hearing. You said dog. You said dog. Sorry. Oh, yeah. I meant the health hearing. Correct. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Usually a dog hearing. Uh, 
Well, what's the board's pleasure? Would you like to get clarification on that before we approve it? We'll have to. Yep. Okay. You want to withdraw your motion and second? Yes. Sure. Okay. So that is withdrawn. So now for the select board regular meeting uh, minutes, September 21st, what's the board's pleasure? I move to approve. I'll second that. We have motion, we have a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. Rosemary, you've got the floor. Brian, do you want to share that um, 2020 cash on hand sheet? Sure. We did get. I'm sorry. Everybody's got it, but uh, it might be helpful for folks from home. So give me a second and we'll pull that up. We did get minutes from the 28th too, for what that's worth. I'd be prepared to accept those tonight if others are. What's the board's pleasure on the meeting minutes of 28? Not on the agenda, Mr. Chairman. No sense breaking yeah. down with it. Yeah. Do no, duly noted. All right, so you should see the 2020 cash on hand now. Is that up on everyone's screen? Yep. Yes, it is. Yes. Okay. Do you want to walk us down through it, Rosemary? Okay. Um, we ended the year with $611,000 worth of cash. Then I took out all the re reserve funds, which was $507,749, which leave, leaves a cash on hand balance of $103,988. And we have delinquent taxes of $154,292.58. And um, we did $131,735 to reduce taxes for this year's taxes, which leaves an uncommitted balance of $127,245.75. A question on the emergency fund, how did we get to 48,000? It's been growing the last couple of years. Wow. The money we got from FEMA went back into that fund. Okay, that was what, 25,000 or so? Yes. Okay. And then uh, these voters allocated a certain amount one year too, right? Yes. It was 20,000 or something like that. And yeah. Okay, wow. That's we made a, a concerted effort to rebuild that fund. Yep, looks like we did a, did, did a well job there too. Yep. So is it the 103,000 that we have to discuss tonight and decide, or is it the 127,000? 127. 127, okay. And everyone got the, uh, the letter from the historical board requesting that their, uh, their uh, FYI 20 year end balance be rolled over into the uh, 2021 fiscal year. Just as a side note. And last year we put this in the budget and took it to the voters, correct? Yes. Do we have to do something with it tonight, Mr. Chairman? It would be nice to at least have a direction for 
Rosemary and Brian to work towards if we want. Brian, do you have any recommendations where you feel like we should focus? Uh, the two things that I would recommend with relation to this is it came up at town meeting and in discussions with the historical society about doing a proper audit. Both Rosemary and I are interested in following through with that. Um, we think that that's worthwhile. That might not be every single year, but um, you know, we'd like to draw up an RFP for it and start getting some pricing on what that would look like and try and incorporate it into our budget, at least for the next year uh, and possibly going forward to kind of free us up from being quite so speculative about uh, our cash on hand. Uh, for the Historical Society's request and how to deal with this money in general, um, I think it's worth it probably to talk to the town's attorney because we've got a couple opinions on uh, how to handle, how, how we have to handle these funds. And you did find the wording on the article for the Historical Society, correct? Yes, and the Historical Society's uh, wording is fairly loose um, about what has to go into reserve fund and what doesn't. Uh, I actually think that that might be a good model next time we're writing a uh, a reserve fund is to use what the historical society used. Because uh, that gave them, they, they have quite a bit of freedom uh, with how to use excess funds and how to build their um, reserve fund. So their request is not totally out of line from what could be done. I don't think so. Um, yeah, I think that we have a few options uh, and we could, it's probably worth it, I think, for a more, a little bit more detailed conversation with historical society and with the town's attorney so that we know we're on good footing for how we can use this money and um, what we can do with them in terms of uh, they also have more options for drawing money out of their reserve fund than some other groups do. Uh, so, you know, this, this might be a very easy question of, uh, you know, balance uh, on what we can contribute to them through the reserve fund and what they can draw from. But I don't know enough about all of their plans for next year, uh, given the changes that they're facing due to COVID-19. Mm -hmm. So what's the board's pleasure? I think that audit business sounds really good. I have a question. If we have any, do we have any pockets uh, that have any money in it for uh, thinking of uh, how we're going to, how our gravel pit's going to be done, you know, or whenever we'll find out tonight, whenever it's going to be exhausted? Are we starting to put money away for anything like that? No, we're not. We don't have a reserve fund that would be a, applicable for uh, either purchasing gravel or purchasing a gravel pit. And reclaiming. Yeah, or reclamation or, or anything like that. So those are going to be expenses that we're going to have. I mean, it, maybe it's not a pertinent subject right now to, to this one. It's not an option that's available to us tonight. Um, for the for the money that we have as of the end of uh, FY20, so we could talk about that when we're planning for town meeting. That maybe we want to have a uh, reserve fund that could be used for uh, a gravel pit. I can review language, but I I don't think any of our uh, current reserve funds would be able to be used for that. So if, even if we have a surplus, there's no way of making, you know, saving this for a rainy day or, or planning for it. it. It has to come out in next year's or whatever budget. Uh, the only, the ways for us to hold on to funds are pretty restricted. Okay. Um, we have, we can use 
uh, restricted, we, we can use reserve funds, uh, but those have to be voter approved. And then the only way to, that approval has to describe how money goes into the reserve fund and how money goes out of the reserve fund. Okay. Uh, then we've also got, um, you know, we can definitely hold on to money for highway projects from one year to another, uh, but general funds are a little bit trickier. Well, we've got things that are gonna happen possibly next year that may be out of our control. So we probably ought to find a way to hold on to this the best way we can, right? That would be going through the voters in our proposed budget for next year. Right. Uh, if we did authorize the uh, transfer of the historical, well, the historical society's money is not in this balance anyhow, because that either goes to the reserve fund or we could move it into their current year's budget, correct? It's, so it's like part of the the money we're discussing, the one hundred twenty seven thousand. That in that, that total includes historical society. That's all uncommitted funds. Okay, and how much was the historical society? Historical society was. I think it was around five or six. Six thousand six hundred ninety-two. That sounds like about right. That's about right. Yeah. It says due to the historical reserve fund, or no? That's is that historical society reserve fund? Yes. Okay, so that's six thousand six hundred ninety-two dollars and seventy-five cents. So basically, it put us down to about one hundred twenty-one thousand. That's. Mm -hmm. not committed somewhere. I, um, it's, I'm very confused by these reserve funds. It, um, I thought Duncan's letter um, after our last select, after our last discussion of this topic, the, the email that he sent to the board I thought was quite interesting. To me, it seems like all of these different reserve funds have their own sort of set of rules based on how they were set up and approved by the taxpayers at town meeting. And I don't think we have clarity on any of that. Um, I certainly haven't seen the language for the, though Brian, you know, your, your input helps, you know, what are the rules for the historical society reserve fund? We should, we should pull out all of those motions um, we will have to, we should, it is included. Well, I shouldn't say that they are mostly included in our, uh, as an appendix in our, uh, capital equipment plan. Uh, but that doesn't include everything, uh, as we found out with this. So that is a project that I'm working on is to update that. Uh, let's see right now. Because Duncan was talking about the historical society, the question of the historical society in relation to the discussion we had last last year about um, contribution to the capital equipment fund, which was controversial. Walter, you know, called it seemed to have one take on it, and Duncan had a different. But there are two different reserve funds with two different sets of rules. Yes, they are. I'm just confused on it all. I, I don't, I'm not clear on what we are able and not able to do here. Uh, Brian. Yes. Mike. I don't have that letter from Duncan in front of me uh, right now, but was he talking about uh, that approximately $800 that we uh, gave to them for the heating in the back room to back that out of this uh, due to the uh, historical society? No, I don't believe so. I think what Nat is talking about, the letter from Duncan, uh, you know, that uh, related to Walter's position last year 
about how we could disperse with excess funds. I understand that, Brian, but he did mention something about that we did give them approximately $800 last meeting for that uh, heat in the back and wanted to know, I thought in that letter, my sense was that we could possibly back that out of that. No, I think if I remember correctly, he was indicating because we did give them that 800 bucks, that was money they had already spent. And so that would be a, an addition for them. No. Oh. Because I think they paid up front for the total cost. And then we just reimbursed them for 50%. Right. But if they go about that way, they'll get the other 50%. No, the, the rest of the money is the budget that they have left over. Um, it, they've already spent whatever it was, the 1600 or whatever. For the but they were talking about bigger figures than what we have in front of us tonight in Duncan's letter. I don't recall. Yeah, I wish I had it in front of me. Well, it sounds like we're not prepared to act on this tonight. We would like a little clarification from the attorney and Brian, you wanted some more specifics from uh, the historical society. Um, mostly with the attorney, but I also think that I'm, I want to talk to the historical society a little bit about what they're going to do with their funds. And, um, you know, we might be able to simplify some of this discussion. But either way, I think the most prudent thing is to talk to our uh, our town's attorney and get a get a better position about how to handle uh, excess funds because this is the kind of second year where we've had a pretty big question about it. That's yeah, we're stumbling. Yeah. yeah. But Brian, your your first thought to, about an audit that was a good idea. Yeah, that, that's kind of not directly related to this discussion, but it kind of is. Right. Uh, with the board's blessing on that, uh, I think Rosemary and I are going to uh, continue forward at seeking input on that. We're not ready to uh, bring anything before the board yet, but... Um, that's an outstanding idea. I, I thought we used to, every other year, have an audit become, uh, completed. It's been several years since we've had one. Oh, has it? Okay. Oh, I personally would rec like to recommend every year. Okay. Because when they do an audit, they have to, go, even though you don't audit that year, they still have to go through and do a lot of the work for that year that's okay. not audited. Okay. Yeah, that's probably a worthwhile uh, venture to look into. I thought we were mandated to do one every other year. No. Not unless you have more than $750,000 worth of federal money, which we haven't had for several years. Oh, and, that, and it, it, but we did because of the- um, The store. Sterling market, okay. That's what I right. Yeah, well, I think it's a good idea too. Okay, so we'll revisit this money after you guys have had a little chance to mull it over. And I've got uh, permission for going to the town's attorney to get a little bit more detailed guidance on uh, cash on hand and reserve funds. Yes. Okay. I'll even agree to that one. All right. I was gonna say, Mike has to give his blessing on that. For yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else, Rosemary? Um, our ballots went out in the mail last Thursday or Friday, and most people received them in their mailboxes on Saturday. Yep. And the post office has given us back several hundred to that have or the addresses are not correct on, or they moved out of town. So we'll be doing that, dealing with that this week. And um, just the, the only thing I have is authorizing Eric to sign the warrant. What's the board's pleasure? So move. Second. Motion is second. Any discussion? 
All those in favor, signify saying aye. 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 Those opposed? I'm going to oh. abstain because I, I don't get these in time to review them. Okay. Noted. Anything else for Rosemary? Question. Rosemary, I haven't been to the town office in a few days, but has the um, box been put up yet? Yes, it is. Oh, cool. Right there beside the um, bulletin board. Oh, okay. And there's a sign that says town and village drop box on it. Nice. I wonder if we shouldn't put a little front porch forum post out about it or something. Okay. Yeah, we could. I mean, it's it's quite large and obvious. I mean, this isn't our old one was kind of tucked into the side of the building. Right. No one's missing this one. And okay. we got about 40 ballots back so far already. Wow. But they need to know it's here. What's that, Doug? I said they need to know it's there, even yeah. if it's obvious if you're looking at it. Right. It's battleship gray. <laughs> So Rosemary, are you checking both drop boxes or yes. you, do you intend to uh, shut off the uh, small one? I don't think so, no. Just keep them both? Yeah. Okay. Some people may want to put inside the building instead of leaving it outside. Okay. Okay. Rosemary, your um, front porch forum post on voting procedures was really good and informative and I thank you for that. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Rosemary. You're welcome. Thank you. Brian, All right. I guess we can get into your, uh, we're a little bit behind, but we can maybe catch up. Okay. So uh, first, things, first thing up is an updated facility use agreement. Uh, this cleans up a few things, tightens it up a little bit, and makes it a little easier for us to manage. The village has not seen this uh, or taken any action on it, but this is, uh, you know, pretty straightforward uh, update for for us on the facility use. Um, let's see, is Lisa still on? Mm -hmm. I don't see Your name is there, but no picture. Well, at any rate, uh, oh, there's Lisa. Um, yeah, uh, the there's a pretty good upgrade for us, but it's not any major change. The one change I'd like to propose that goes along with this is uh, when it was just myself doing facility use. Um, it was a little bit, I liked taking them to uh, the select board meetings to approve them because that was kind of an extra possibility for knowing what was going on. But I think between Lisa and myself, we've got a pretty good handle on activities in general. And um, I don't think we need to bring those before the select board regularly anymore. So I'd like it to be, uh, kind of procedure for the facility use to be signed by uh, Lisa and myself and we'll use our discretion about which ones we bring before the select board. Sounds good. Fine. Maybe Brian, um, when you do your Friday reports, you could just include yeah. a line about that if, it, if you think of it. Yeah, I, yeah I can give you an update on, on anything. And yeah, the, you know, if we've got somebody who wants to serve alcohol or do something like that, something that's a little bit outside of the normal use, we can bring it before the select board. But a lot of the uses are just, you know, birthday parties or, uh, you know, family gatherings and things like that, that aren't are pretty routine and don't really need the board's approval, but it was nice to get it out there. Well, uh, but now with Lisa's help, I think that we've got kind of more visibility already. Makes sense, yep. Yeah. Doug, did you have a question? Yeah, well, I have a suggestion. It, it's uh, a lot of this stuff, well, some of it could be town and village, but I don't think in something that's just town property, 
I don't think you should have something that says town and village agreement. You've got an extraneous person to essentially to this contract. So I, I think that if we have just town stuff, it should be town of Johnson facility use. There are, mo we've signed this most often for solely owned town properties. And I suspect that the village is probably the same. They probably mostly assign these for people asking to use, you know, the, the village green and stuff. Uh, it doesn't come up that often for jointly owned properties. So I think Doug's suggestion would be fine. Except for the, uh, the upstairs of the municipal building. Yep. Could it be worded in a way that said uh, town and village or town only village, uh, town only property? We could change it from town slash to kind of spell it out, say town and or village. Okay. And that um, would capture everything. Or we could put in a blank where, you know, we write it in. I mean, it'd be nice if we could have one form you know, for everyone to use instead of having three different folders. One That's for kind the of the, the historic use of why this yeah. has said town slash village all this time is to make it to get to make one form. Yeah, mm -hmm. I I would say that that's sloppy work. How would you propose changing? I would, it? I would have three of them. I mean, you could have one. You could just pair this one says town of Johnson facility use and you go through and, and it's signed off by the town you have one for the village and then you have one for the municipal building town and village it's it's, it's pretty simple i don't think having a i don't think that simplifying the form you know if you ever get into a fight you don't want an extraneous thing of who are they and casting you know why are they involved in stuff like that you know you want the actual party Mr. Chairman, we should take Doug's advice. What's the rest of your thoughts, Kyle, yeah. Matt? Doug makes a good case. Kyle? Yeah, sure. I mean, that okay. sounds cleaner. So why don't we do that, Brian? Come back with uh, two for us to approve, and then the village will have to have their own. So what I'll, I'll make town only. And then I'll make a town and village. Yep. And I'll submit the town and village one for the village to the village for their approval. Yep. You already have the town and village. I I think I'm gonna get rid of the slash and make it okay. Actually, say town and village. Mm -hmm. But you want to change it anyhow. Yeah. Okay. Doug's yeah. always pretty clever on that legal stuff. He's keeping us out of jail. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and then provide it for them and they can update it or, or not. But okay. otherwise, this looks good. Yep. yep. Okay. Passive fund. A passive renewal. So uh, it our renewal is up. Uh, we need to update our, uh, uh, we have to provide our agreement um, this week or submit that we are going out to bid seeking alternatives. Um, I've been very happy with VLCT as a partner organization. They provide good insurance for us at a reasonable rates. Um, I don't really think it's worth our effort to Take this out to bid right now. Um, so I, I, my suggestion is that we uh, complete the renewal form and uh, re-up our insurance for next year. With all of these other uh, increases in insurances, this is really quite modest. And this doesn't have our experience modifier uh, applied to it yet. So our <clears throat> we have good experience, especially on our workers' comp. So we might actually see a smaller increase than that uh, once it's all calculated out. Right. That's 
speculation on my part, but yeah, if they're talking about an increase of 1.5% across the whole fund, um, you know, yeah, we have, we have a good safety record. So uh, as long as we continue that safety record, we, we see our, uh, we see our discount for a good safety record increase occasionally. What's Boar's pleasure? I move we stay with him. That we renew the policy? Correct. Second. No second. We have motion and a second. Any discussion? I do have one thing that we should bring up. Um, yeah, the, the modifications are just going to be new vehicles that we've purchased. Um, I think that's our only property shift, uh, our only equipment shift for property. I think that the uh, cold storage building might be underinsured. So I am going to be looking at that with them when we do the renewal. Okay. Any other comments? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? You guys have it. The Racial Justice Committee. Okay. So for this, our meeting tonight uh, and our discussion about this tonight, um, it seemed to me that through discussions, we kind of had different ideas about how we were going to interview people and make appointments. So uh, tonight is really just our, our opportunity to set that. And then we can either have a special meeting or uh, at our next regular meeting, actually do the appointments. But tonight uh, I'd like to focus on how we are interviewing people. Um, a pretty good option, uh, I think that uh, Eric had suggested was, um, you know, interviewing, having the select board members interview people. Uh, we could, you know, submit questions in advance, uh, give people a little opportunity to speak, and then uh, doing kind of a ranked choice voting on candidates, um, which we could do in executive session, uh, or we could do it over email, uh, and then making the appointments either once we left executive session or in a following meeting. Um, you know, I think that that ranked choice is probably going to be a pretty strong option for, um, you know, letting people kind of hear different, you know, make their votes uh, across a few different people uh, and, and could lead to some pretty good representation on the, the committee. And one of the thoughts on, well, some of where I came from and, and in discussion with Brian, uh, we did check with the league of cities and towns and we are able to go into executive session for committee appointments um, under the circumstances i think that's probably it would be a good idea we got quite a few candidates and we're only going to be able to select three of them and uh you know just the how the discussion might go it might be uh we certainly don't want uh, anybody to feel offended by our evaluation of candidates um, if we were to do it in open session. So I think that is a good option for us. If we do it weighted, uh, that would hopefully narrow us down to talking about the top four or five candidates that we would have to choose three of instead of talking about the whole slate of them. But it's a suggestion. Um, if somebody's got a better thought on it, we can certainly entertain that. So we'd get three number one votes, three number two, or do we just vote one, two, three, four, five? Each, each of us would vote one, two, three, and your one vote would have a higher a weight to it than your third, uh, second and third. And then if, depending on how everybody voted, uh, your third might be my first, and that so would be a a combination 
uh, vote or weight there. Uh, that would probably be a leading contender. Um, if somebody didn't get any votes, well, then obviously uh, they would be uh, canceled, you know, wiped off, and we wouldn't have to discuss everybody. So, so this weighted vote, we wouldn't say total up the numbers and say these are the the people. We would take a second look through. No. Uh, the way I was thinking is each of us would put in our first, second, and choice, a uh, second, and third choice. Uh, and this can be decided, but if you had, let's say, 15 points to your first choice, 10 points to your second choice, and five points to your third choice, then that's how it would be weighted. And then when everybody submitted their choices, Brian can tally it up and see who the top three, four, five people are. And what do you do with the top three, four, five? I mean, that, that's what I was asking. There's another vote? Then we would have to decide out of those top contenders. And there may be good arguments for looking at the fifth person, or there may be some tie votes uh, as to why one candidate would be stronger than another. I mean, that's where we would have to get into the uh, the uh, negotiating on it, instead of having to negotiate on every single candidate, this is a quick way to get it down to, you know, some number four or five that we can uh, uh, negotiate on who we would like to see. I'm just not familiar. I've never used that system for any anything, so I, I'm not, I'm not certain, you know, whether I would. I, I find myself thinking, well, maybe I want a four and five because maybe my four and somebody else's one, you know, work out. I, I you know, I, I'm stuck in my habits. I think that I don't think there's any magic to having to only picking three. I think that we want to pick. I mean, we could rank everybody and then pick a cutoff of you know people who received you know, so much less points than this, uh, we, we don't want to examine, but, um, you know, I don't think it's, I, I think that the ranked choice is going to be the, our best way of getting kind of diverse candidates and uh, not having to go through, like managing our time also, so that we're not yeah, we give everybody a certain amount of consideration. We hear everybody in advance, but making that cut from the, the first round to the second round, making it a little bit more manageable. How many presently applicants do we have or candidates? Uh, that changed a little bit. Sorry, let me double check the list right now. No. While you're double checking the list, I'll just give my two cents. Um, Please. I think um, this, it sounds like what you're talking about sounds like a more or less fine. I would just say, keep it as simple as possible. Um, and the other thing I would, I think is what you're saying is that this isn't gonna lock us into, lock or obligate our votes in any one particular way, our final vote in any particular way. It's just a way of trying to get some consensus, early consensus within the group to right. organize the conversation. Yes, uh, we have nine applications. Wow. This could hopefully get us down to where we have to decide between four or five people instead of nine people. Uh, very quickly. And then when we have a uh, consensus on that, we have to come out of executive session to make those appointments. So, yeah. Right. So speaking of consensus, I, um, are we as a board clear about uh, the, the, type of candidate that we're looking for on this on this committee in terms of having uh, you know we're we're working from a certain um, 
operating from a, a same a same place when we're when we're looking for a candidate. I mean, we can have different ideas of who fills that, you know, role, but just, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, um, I guess I'll open it up to the board. Uh, anyone have any thoughts there? We've certainly spent a lot of time talking about the committee, uh, meeting jointly with the trustees. We've had quite a bit of discussion about the process we were gonna use for selecting candidates. Does everyone feel like they have a good handle on where we're trying to get to? I guess I, 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 I would like, I kind of would like to hear from everybody where they're coming from. I think I've made myself <laughs> clear a gazillion times, but it would be, it would be nice just to hear out loud where, what other board members are, are thinking, just so I know that where people are coming from, because it's been it's been a little cloudy for me. Okay, any board members care to to speak to that? Yeah, I'll I'll speak to that. My interest is that uh, there will be practical um, implementation where the rubber meets the road on this, uh, and I'm looking for people who will be in favor of moving racial and economic justice ahead. I guess I couldn't have said that any better than Doug. Yeah, Doug said it well. Um, I think the, the couple of documents, the documents that we've, that we've um, really spent a lot of time working on and worked really hard on already to, um, establish the committee for me really define that um, already and and I think express um, where the board's coming from as a whole individually we're going to have different judgments but as a whole I think that's that's what we're looking for okay and I guess I would sort of echo those same comments that have been made. Uh, certainly looking for a group to look at all of the proposals that come before them that the, this board doesn't have the, the luxury of time to, to deep dive into and coming back to us with recommendations. That, that's my hope. And that sort of give you uh, what you were looking for, Kyle? Yeah, it's a little, it's a little vague, but I, but as long as we're, yeah, it sounds like we're in consensus with that we, this committee is for, for, you know, for moving racial justice forward and we're looking for candidates that, you know, also believe that and want to work towards that and believe racism is an issue in Johnson and needs to be addressed and those kinds of things, so. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, back to the topic here on the suggestion that I had for how to make uh, volunteer selection. What's the board's thoughts there? Um, obviously, we'll have to set a special meeting just to interview the candidates. Um, you know, maybe a week from tonight or, or when we're able to do it. I, I just saw a note from Meredith, the village has a special meeting this Wednesday to interview their slate of candidates. So uh, they're obviously moving. So maybe if we were to plan on meeting next Monday, we could do the same. Next Monday will be their regular meeting. Okay, that's their regular meeting. Okay, so we would have to do it some other time. Yeah. The village I think is gonna have a kind of an easy decision to make because I believe they only had three people apply for it. Okay. Um, I'm not certain, but we have a larger population, so I'm oh yes, I understand more applicants. Right. I would suggest I don't know when we're going to meet, but I would suggest we take you know, like one through five, and we're going to 
you know, we, we, we put, we rate them one through five. Um, I don't know what, what points you ascribe, but then that we also say we're going to look at the top five. I mean, I think we should set that process now before we hold a meeting to decide how many people were, where we're going to draw the cutoff mm -hmm. to consider the final grouping. You're not saying that making a cutoff before you, before they even have a chance to talk to us, are you, Doug? No. Okay. Well, I'm not certain. You know, I was saying that we. It sounded it to me, actually. Yeah, I was saying that we we're going to do this. Oh no, we have to talk to them first, and then okay. All right. after that, say we are going to we're going to consider the top five candidates in under this weighted thing for the three positions. Got it. Got it. Glad you clarified that. It might be good to have a few alternative, like you know, thinking about top five, a few, a couple alternatives, just because sometimes things happen and. A couple of alternates. Yeah. Then you mean okay. seven then. Well, if I can offer a suggestion, why don't we, uh, why don't we rank the whole list of candidates? At, we'll have at a, at a future meeting. We'll have all the candidates give you know roughly two minute why I should why I should serve on the racial justice committee. We'll rank all the candidates one through nine. Candidates that receive less than, uh, and I, I can't do the math well enough off my head, but basically the top five candidates will get, uh, you know, additional scrutiny and a little bit more attention, and then we'll vote on the top three from that. If we rank all of the candidates, then we can say like, well, you know, something happened with one of our top choices, and we want another person in. We can go to the sixth person because uh, we'll have all of them ranked. I understood Kyle to be saying that if we appoint three, or maybe not, if we appoint three, we might appoint alternates in case someone who was appointed, you know, steps off the committee. I, I'm not certain. Is, is that what you're after? Yeah. Okay. I, I, I think that uh, if we're looking at saving time, we don't want to run down one through nine, you know? Right. And, and, and furthermore, this is such a subjective judgment. I'd like not to have to rate people and, you know, say this guy is hitting a buck 10 or something like that, you know? Okay. Uh, I, 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 I'm grateful for everyone that's applying. If we want to appoint alternates, that's not anything we discussed with the village when we created the committee. So they wouldn't have, they wouldn't have voting power or anything else. They, they don't be an alternate name only. Oh yeah. Well, that would be no problem. If somebody had to leave, then that other alternate would just take their place. Well, I think you have to appoint them to take their place. Well, that's true, but that, that would be already set for them to take their place. I think Kyle's point was if somebody was not able to serve, you know, something comes up, they're not going to be able to serve on this committee, then we would have that person in the wings that we could slide in. Exactly. Am I correct, Kyle? Yeah. Yeah. It wouldn't be that they would like you are Doug on that committee as an alternate sitting in and you're, you're identified as an alternate. That's not what Kyle was suggesting. No, so, yeah, I mean, completely different. On, on the governing board, I, I can participate in the discussion. I can make motions. I can I, yeah. uh, second things, but I just don't vote. Right. So, uh, you know. All right. Okay. I, I think to Doug's point, I would guess that all of us are not going to vote for the or nominate and rank the top, the three that each of us would like are going to be the same three that we would have five people probably that would be uh, uh, identified as, you know, some amount of support in their being on the committee. So I, I don't think we would have to go down through and, 
and rank the whole list or more than three each, and we would get that magic number of five. Okay. It, are we okay with this? Yep. Mike? I just was waving to Scott. <laughs> oh. Uh, I think Scott would like to ask a question. So when we're ready for public comment, uh, we'll, we'll call on you, Scott. Okay. I guess I, I, I do have another comment. Um, with nine candidates, um, I'm just, I would like to be aware and, and respectful of everyone's time that maybe we have a time limit for each candidate, have them give a specific amount of time for, to make their statement and us a specific amount of time to ask questions. I was thinking that we'd give each candidate two to three minutes to introduce themselves, uh, why they think they're a good candidate for this committee, you know, that kind of uh, discussion. And then at the end, open up to the board members to ask questions of either each candidate or all of the candidates. But, yeah, I, I think the board should also be limited by time. Right. We yeah. seem to be pretty good at prolonging discussion. <laughs> right. <laughs> Especially with, with nine people, uh, uh, candidates, uh, yeah. we'll, we'll limit it to a 30 minutes at the most or something like that. Well, okay, good. Uh, yeah, Brian, go ahead and open it up. We're... Uh, so as a reminder, and we've got a couple of folks calling in, uh, if you'd like to speak, please raise your hand. There's a... a control button on the participants tab to raise your hand. Uh, and you can also raise your hand if you're calling by phone by dialing uh, star six nine. But uh, Scott, you had your hand up first. So I'll have you unmute and go ahead. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for the wave, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm a board member on a nonprofit and we have standing members that are fully vetted and ready to go, ranked in order. So if a board member has to step away for health or whatever reason, um, nobody needs to make an appointment. They're ready to go by order um, of the pick. And it's a pretty decent system. It's pretty flawless. And it makes um, people's time a little bit more in check. It doesn't get dragged on. So. And, um, you know, obviously I'm only one village trustee, but I don't think the village trustees would have an issue with standing members at all. And if we had the opportunity um, with a more of a selection, we would probably do the same thing. Thanks. Thank you, Scott. Uh, I don't see anybody else. Okay, Afi. Okay, you'll have to unmute yourself, Afi. You can hear me, right? Yes. Okay. You, you have two things pulled up. Hey, what? You have you have two screens pulled up. You'll have to X out of one of them. There you go. <laughs> okay, Avi, you're going to have to unmute again. Okay. You can hear me talking again. Oh. I'm going to do it again. All right, give me just a second, Avi. I'm going to try and fix this. Nope, I got rid of the other one. Okay, try again. Okay. What's going on? Oh, this is great. No, I'm sorry, Afi. Um, I'm not sure how we're going to be able to be, how we're gonna be able to fix that. Uh, Doug, quickly, Eric lost his connection. So, so you're board chair for the time being. Oh dear. 
Can I have a call on the phone? Huh? Yeah, that might work. Yeah, Offie, can you call? Yeah, the, um, the, the phone number is on the uh, agenda that you received. You I should can, be able to call in with that. I can give you that phone number, Offie. Do you have a pencil and paper? If so, nod. Okay. A one, six, four, six, five, five, eight, eight, six, five, six. And you might need, do they need the ID or? Yeah, he'll also need the ID and the, the passcode. Okay, there are, there are two more numbers you'll need, Offie. Three four four six five two two five four four. That's the meeting ID. And one five five three one is the passcode. So you have the phone number, you have the meeting ID and the passcode, lastly. All right, so we'll give you a second to uh, dial in with that. Um, the other possibility that could be the cause of it, uh, is there somebody else in the room who's also connected to this meeting? We've got the two computers that are both broadcasting, that might do it. All right, and uh, Donna, you have a, a comment. So while we're waiting for Offie to call in. Hey. So Donna, do you want to go ahead? A well oiled machine. Yeah, yeah, it was just that I noticed that there's three different phone numbers listed to call in and the first one, the one you gave Doug says New York after it. I wonder if that's only for people who are in New York. <laughs> no, uh, you can call into any of the numbers. There's actually a much longer list. Uh, I just picked a handful of numbers out to include. Okay, why does that say NY after it? I assume that it's probably a local call for people in New York. Uh, I have I have called in using that number before, so that's why I selected that. Oh, okay, I've always assumed you couldn't use that one. So uh, yeah, maybe you should take out the NY so you don't confuse people. Yeah, yeah we can remove that easily. Um, are there, is there anyone else that wants to comment while we're waiting for Offie? Okay. I think Offie's got his hands up. I think he might have figured out the problem. So we're going to try this again, Offie. Unmute. 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 Nope, I'm sorry. Yeah. Shoot. Hmm. Can you turn? What if Offie were to turn the sound on his computer way down and, and talk? Because it seems to be giving feedback. Might yeah, that might work if you turn head. your sound down. So give, give me a thumbs up when you're ready to try again. Let's oh. go. Oh, there's yeah, I was doing that with Scott at one time. <laughs> Saved yeah, by the I don't bell. Know we fixed it, but. Oh, dear. Well, you missed the best part of the meeting, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, we're still working on Offie. He, uh, we've given him the phone numbers uh, to call in ID and passcode. What about if we turn on the chat? Could he just chat it in? I can't actually turn on the chat from within the meeting. I'd have to okay. uh, kick everybody out and restart the meeting in order to re-enable chat. Okay. Never That's mind. kind of a cumbersome thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, I had a question in this process. Um, are we going to have, when we're interviewing candidates, it seems to me like when we were able to be in person, we would not interview someone and give them the benefit of the watching the previous interview. I, I assume that uh, that uh, there's going to be, it, it's kind of like isolating witnesses in a, in a court case. You, you don't get to hear what the person ahead of you said. With employees, we've always done it that way. Uh, but with the committee members, of course, I don't ever remember having this many committee members or people soliciting to be on a committee, but 
uh, it's always done in front of everybody. We would just ask them all questions. They would all introduce themselves. It would be pretty laid back and informal in that process. All right. Uh, is this second number you, Offie, the uh, four seven nine three 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 nine? Is that you, Offie? Yes. Yes. Okay. So you'll have to unmute yourself on the phone. It's uh, star six seven on the phone. Let's try that again. That didn't work. It's still not taking. Why doesn't somebody have him call their cell phone and put it on speakerphone? I think that's a good way for us to probably get echoes again. You think? I've seen it work. Yeah. All right. Um, so, uh, Mike, uh, you have office number already, or just office? Yes, but uh, <laughs> I never figured out how to put the speakerphone on. Okay. <laughs> uh, in that case, let me get this. <laughs> Together. Yeah, give me a second. Maybe I can. Oh. I'm sure it's going to be busy. Offer, you can try calling my cell phone number. <laughs> it's 829 9082. That's my personal number. That's not my work number. Didn't mean to give that one out, but that's okay. <laughs> it's in China by now. Yeah. It's on TikTok. Call that one. <laughs> oh. Do we have anyone else that wants to speak as well? No, we haven't had any other requests. Okay. I can't read the paper you're holding up. Uh, so let me give you the, the phone number again. Uh, we'll use the, the right one. 793-8480. Uh, Hello, Afi. Okay. Hello. How's that yeah, working? Hi, I'm here. I can hear you. Can you hear me? I hear an echo. I can hear you. How about everybody else? Yes, I, can I hear, hear the echo. We hear him. I hear him. Can you hear well, my echo? Go ahead, Afi. Oh, am I getting to be interviewed or what? Or should I just talk myself or something for like three minutes? Uh, we'll be for the candidate candidates. We'll be doing that at a future meeting. Oh, so so what's that do now? Eh? Uh, if you've got feedback and how you want us to select candidates, we could do that. But uh, just for your interest, uh, we've already got your interest, and we know we know that we'll be calling you back when we're reviewing candidates. Oh, I, I feel like I could just talk and maybe uh, say why I think I'm justified to be a. Right, not tonight. We'll contact you. Thank you. <laughs> Good night. Thanks. Good night, Alfie. Okay. Uh, if we're ready to move on and go with that process, then we can 
set up a special meeting and uh, so I'll solicit when we can when everybody has time to meet uh, when all the board members have time to meet and then I'll communicate that to the candidates uh, I'm probably targeting next Wednesday as a likely date um, but we'll, we'll have a chance to weigh in on that and Brian please reach out to the candidates and make sure they're able to get on a zoom or some way that we can uh, yeah. you know, have a better interview than that because yes. some of the candidates may not have internet capabilities or whatever yeah we'll, we'll find a way to accommodate uh, okay um let's see the do we want to submit any questions in advance or do you want to have them just give kind of an off the cuff, well, not off the cuff, but a prepared uh, remarks on why they think they should serve. Keep it simple. Yeah, okay. I would agree. All right, so I'll take that to uh, to each of them to prepare that, uh, like two minutes, one minute. A couple minutes and then be prepared for questions from board members. Okay. And do by we the want, end, sorry, go sorry. ahead, Kyle. I was just going to say by the end of the night, we should have the, we'll notify them if they were the one of the three. Okay. Did we, uh, do we as a board want to have three prepared questions or are we just going to react to what the candidates say? Uh, board members, your thoughts? Just wondering if there was like two or three just questions that we ask everybody or or that would be the fairest way to do it, I would think. Yeah, I, I'm you know, that's how I, I like to do a lot of uh, you know, at, at least first round job interviews is uh, with a couple prepared questions. Uh, I would suggest having at least one prepared question uh, and you might ask some questions and reaction, uh, but having a little bit of prepared questions will, will help out a lot. Um, yeah. Brian, what time do we have the candidate for the highway uh, supervisor position? It's coming up relatively soon. So we've got to- What time did you gotta tell move on from this. I think we can do some of these other ones relatively quickly, I hope. Um, what time did you tell him to be here? I asked him to be here around a quarter after. Okay, and we're quarter after right now, so we gotta get moving. Is the board happy with the, the process we were gonna use? Okay, yep. let's move on to the some gymnastics equipment. Yep, so with the gymnastics equipment, uh, we are, Let's see, we've got a list now, so I'm gonna share my screen. Brian, I'm, I'm just wanna jump in because Lisa sent me a text message earlier saying that her internet is kind of spotty and she might not necessarily be hearing us as well as uh, we'd, you know, she would like or we would like, but she is hopefully available to answer questions if, if we need. Okay, thanks for that heads up. Cause yeah, I, I think she's, disappeared out of the meeting again. And just as I say that, there she is. There she is. All right, so I'm gonna share my screen with this equipment. Uh, the Lisa will be able to better answer this than I can, but the gist of it is uh, we've got a handful of pieces of equipment, mostly pieces that are redundant that Becca our former instructor would like to purchase from us. Uh, these are all pieces of equipment that we're not currently using. Uh, so they would, they'd not currently be missed. And uh, a number of them are redundant with other equipment that we have, but some of them are not. And if we got a good program together, we would have to rebuy a, a handful of things, but not too much. Are we not currently using them because we don't have a program? We don't have an instructor right now. 
No, we have a program. Becca was teaching a much more advanced program because of her skill set. And she was willing to do a lot more with moving equipment around and stuff than anyone that we interviewed. Um, she would spend several hours setting up and taking down the gym and moving things around the town that others are not quite so enthusiastic about when you talk to them about the, running the program. That so we have a tumble time and beginner gymnastics set up with extra equipment beyond this list sitting waiting in rec storage if we ever get an intermediate program going again. So we would keep the intermediate hoping that we get a program, Lisa, but sell the really advanced stuff. Is that what we're talking about? Um, we would, yes, we would keep enough to run up to through an intermediate program. And then the stuff that we're selling is mostly stuff that sort of has a shelf life. So if it sits folded for mm -hmm. years on end, it's going when we unroll it, it's going to be ruined anyway. Oh. Well then, yeah. How is, do you like Becca's offers? I, I, I don't know much about the equipment. <laughs> Um, I think her offers are reasonable because the um, all the equipment is definitely very used. We, it's been, now it's been through a flood. Um, it's been moved all over the place back and forth. And also just knowing Becca as an individual, I feel that she is a very you know honest person who wants the best for our community. When we started the Tumble Time program, she sent us a whole program to run. You know, she's remained involved in our gymnastics program, even from afar with no compensation other than just knowing that kids are doing gymnastics and that makes her happy. Nice. We're looking at a little over $1,100. Uh, yes. And it, sh it should be noted, I think everything that was purchased, um, she said came through monies they made running the gymnastics program. So it was never put in as a tax line item. That's true, yeah. Make the motion, we sell the stuff to her. We've got a motion, do we have a second? Uh, I don't think you actually need to make a motion. This is okay. really uh, informational. I think to get rid of town assets, the board would have to approve that. Okay. Um, we do have a motion and a second on the floor during discussion, and it should be noted uh, this was not put out for bid. This would be kind of difficult, Mr. Chairman, I think, to put out to bid because people would try to buy a onesie twosies probably, and there'd be a lot of time showing stuff. I think in this case here, that I don't think it's any big deal. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that we note that. that... Right. And I think what I said should be in the minutes. Yeah. Um, Lisa, is Becca going to be picking this up? Yes. Okay. Does, it, does the proceeds go to the rec reserve fund? I don't know where we put them, but going yeah, going into the rec budget somehow. I would say if we put them in the reserve fund, then they're reserved for rec indefinitely yep. and you don't lose it at the end of the year. Okay. You want me to put an addendum to that, Mr. Chairman? If you'd like. I'll do that. Is a second in agreement? To put it in the reserve fund? Yes. Yep. Okay, a friendly amendment and it's agreed to by the seconder. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Oh. Thank that lady for taking them off our hands, too. Kim's waving. Kim has a question. Okay. Uh, you'll have to unmute Kim. Yep. Go ahead. Um, I just wondered if it might be possible to keep the funding within the gymnastics program, because if you do find an instructor um, that's willing to teach to that level, and you might want to be able to purchase some equipment that would then help those people who are at that level. 
it is not in the reserve fund uh, to that level of specificity. Okay. Uh, that it would go into a reserve fund that is for the use on recreation um, with a couple strings attached. And I think that new equipment would be something that would qualify in the future. Right, thank well, you. That's, that's the benefit of putting it in the reserve fund is that if we find an instructor in three months or if we find an instructor in 18 months, the, the money will be there. Um, so. All right, thank you. Yes. I mean, it might be for something else too, but. Yeah. Okay, uh, I'll ask the board, do you wanna proceed with item five and six? The candidate for the uh, employment is on the line already. We had asked him to be here at quarter after eight. What's the board's pleasure? Why don't we take care of the candidate and come revisit these five and six? We can. Well, if that's the pleasure of the board. We revisit those tonight. Yes, you know, we might as well get, get it over with. Yeah, okay. We can. Good. So I would uh, entertain a motion to enter into executive session, inviting Michael Sal Salem and Brian Story. I move we go into executive session for employment employee recruitment as allowed by VSA 1, 1 VSA 313A3. Second. We have motion and second, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Okay, Brian, do your magic. Uh, Donna's got a question before we go in. Okay, where's Donna? Okay. Yeah, I guess I'm just wondering, do you want me to come back after the executive session? And if so, how will I know when it's over? You could give me a call. Give you a call. Or do you want to know my phone number? Does Brian have it? I'm not sure. I I would like to get it again. Do you want to say it or I, I, I already given my phone number out <laughs> today. So why don't I give you my number and you can text me? <laughs> okay. So, are there others here that are interested in rejoining for the naming rights or the gravel pit discussion? If there is anybody who would like to rejoin us, uh, I'll turn on the waiting room uh, so that you'll, you can rejoin, you'll sit in the waiting room, and then I'll move you into the meeting once we move on to uh, topics for public discussion. It looks like Marla was the only Do member of yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. the The waiting room will be separate from people in the waiting room, uh, so we can have our executive session discussion freely, and then we can move people in once we're done. So they can just hang there for yeah for a little while. All right. Or they can uh, check back on us in a, in a little bit. They can have a toddy. They have to share. <laughs> All right, so uh, Donna, my phone number is 793-8480. How's she okay. gonna know when to call? No. She's gonna text me so that I have her phone number. Oh, I see, okay. And then I'll text her. Yeah. I was just trying to save her from uh, you know, having to give her phone number out. Okay, I'll text it to you and then you give me a call. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Donna. Yep, good night. Thanks, Donna. All right, so for everybody else, I'm turning on the waiting room and I'm going to uh, place everybody who's not in the executive session in the waiting room. You are free to either leave it on or, uh, or leave uh, and check back on us uh, in about an hour. So, okay, thanks everybody for the time. Turn to our agenda item number five in your report, evaluation of new gravel pit. All right, so uh, Brian Krause and I met with uh, Jack from Vermont Testing this morning and uh, we've gone back over everything and he's got 
uh, kind of through his explanation, you know, he's a little bit more positive about the uh, new land owned by NATO that NATO's interested in possibly selling us. Um, so I discussed it with Jack. We're going to go up there uh, tomorrow, actually, to take a look in person and start thinking about what it would take in terms of uh, how to do this. The issue with this is uh, there's a decent amount of cover on top of, um, you know, it, it's 15 to 30 feet of dirt that we don't want on could top we, of the gravel. Could we use that dirt to for the reclamation of the old pit? I'm hoping so. You know, that's what we intend to do. Uh, he would support that if we make an application to, you know, if we go to Act 250 to ask for an opinion on this, um, he'll help us with uh, permitting and other things for the, the pit as we need it, but we will hopefully not need an Act 250 permit for this. Now you said buy the property, we're just going to rent it just like we did the other property, right? Uh, we actually bought the other property. Right. And we haven't entered into negotiations with Burke yet. No, but we still had to pay for the gravel that came out of it. Yep. I mean, it's not like we really owned it. Yeah, we owned the property, but he owned the mineral right. I understand that. But when I when I own property, I like to own everything. That'll be part of the negotiation. Yeah. Yeah. We'll have to negotiate the purchase once we have, you know, a decent kind of outlook for uh, how much we think we're gonna get out of this, how easy it gonna, is it gonna be, what would it take, what would it cost for us to open this up as an active pit? Now we uh, paid for this uh, evaluation, correct? We paid for a significant amount of his work and uh, we're still under the old contract. So we haven't had to pay anything additional yet. And okay. tomorrow's meeting isn't gonna cost any more either. Is this privileged information just for the for the board itself, or is this shared information with the NATOs? Everything that we're doing right now is, is shared information. We don't have anything currently that I would think would disadvantage us in negotiations. Of course we do. You know that this is all disadvantage if they know the uh, the test results. We're we're at a disadvantage on this. That's a good point. Yeah, good good point. I'm not sure where that line is drawn for us. So let me say something right now, is that when we did this last time, it wasn't a we, I was Bert's attorney. Obviously I'm out on that, but uh, just, just letting you know that. And I think that uh, if you go, uh, if we go ahead with this, I would like to not be involved in any further discussions on this. Um, you know, I think I should step out. I don't think I would represent Bert, but just, just letting you know that. Okay. So you would recuse yourself from any decision. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the cat's out of the bag already anyway, as far as the test pips, the test the bores and everything. I don't get it. It's no way to do a negotiation. So you're gonna do a follow-up tomorrow? Yes. Yeah. And I, I will agree that th we've gotten about as far as as much detail as I would get out publicly on this, but yeah, uh, uh, we'll, we'll continue negotiations and, and it's going to soon be time to actually so properly negotiate for this. Do you expect after tomorrow you would have a recommendation for this board on whether we pursue this matter any further? I'm expecting so, yes. Okay. So we'll bring it up again next uh, next meeting? Hopefully the next meeting. Uh, we'll see what kind of uh, report we can generate uh, between now and then. Okay. Anybody got any questions for? 
Brian? I want you to know right now, I would never vote in the affirmative unless the town could completely own the land and mineral rights. Noted. Okay, if there's no further discussion, we'll move on to the naming rights of the trailhead. Um, I'm treating that as, as a, uh, uh, where is this ad hoc committee in, in moving towards a possible uh, contribution from the Alexander family uh, for a plan that uh, we, the people in this community come up with. Um, you know, we've had uh, considerable discussions and we are, um, my most recent correspondence from uh, Deborah Alexander was that uh, in part we're dealing with emotion here. Uh, her husband, Ted, died on November 29th in, of 2019 and an anniversary is coming up and they're hoping to have in place well in advance of that date uh, to know whether this they can reach an agreement with us and we can reach an agreement with them. Um, so we, you know, we've got an ad hoc committee. We have a, uh, a design that's, that's been drawn up. Uh, it's been through two phases. It was sent out uh, with uh, uh, cost estimates by Howard Romero. The, um, we're waiting for a design from Kate Lally for the, for the, um, she's a landscape architect. She's seen the design of, of Howard uh, for that. She liked it. Uh, Howard sent his out and asked for comments. I haven't seen any comments, but I haven't heard anything negative. I think mostly everything is positive on it. Um, I've talked to Lisa Cruz, who is on our, uh, our committee and asked if we could appear before the rec committee because the the old mill park and the rec committee ought to be intimately involved with this it's, it's so it's uh you know almost you know uh you know tight well it's tied to them nearly um and so they're having a meeting on the 15th and we're planning to hopefully have uh kate lally's architecture plan have another meeting where where the committee can look at those uh, Howard's plan and that plan together. Um, uh, I will say also that that uh, Duncan has procured through Steve Town an estimate of what it would cost to to bring uh, electrical service to that building with an idea that this could be um, a uh, an intro to for electrifying fields or things like that. So we, we could get electricity over there. Uh, uh, I've met with um, Kelly Frost, who is the public relations uh, con consumer representative, uh, community representative for the um, studio center, trying to get information from her on to how to approach, uh, how to approach this uh, project and uh, so got a good idea on that and we'll get back in touch with her. So we're planning to meet with the uh, rec committee on the 15th and bring this to you folks on the, on the 19th um, and see what, uh, what your take on it is. And as you're, you know, as you're aware, uh, and we, you know, will take the input they're, they're a public meeting you know they're um they'll be you know it'll be well publicized um or, or or that's what uh uh i understood from lisa that that her meetings are um and then we'll bring it to you and uh we'll see what 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 the select board says on it and i think it would have to be in uh in executive session because we don't want or or um, if we're going to be talking numbers about what kind of a proposal we might might make, um, and uh, as as might be modified by the uh, input from the from the rec committee and the public at that point in time. 
So um, that's where we stand. This is rather like making a grant application, only you've got a you've got a a lot of emotion tied up on the other end, which is why they're wanting to make make a donation and create this memorial. Question for Doug. Eric. Go ahead, Mike. Uh, uh, Doug, I'd never presume to tell you your business, but did you mean Troy Dolan, not Steve Town? No. Yes. Steve. What? Doug, you misspoke. You said Steve Town. You did I, not. I, I did not misspeak. It is Steve Town. It is Steve Town. Duncan asked for uh, Duncan asked Steve Town to perform an estimate of what it would cost to bring power over there. I apologize. Really? Yeah, well, it's no problem. I mean, I, I understand. I, I apologize. I, I would have thought the same question. Uh, um, it's the the thought is that Steve Town is intimately familiar with with the transformers, knows the distances, knows everything, and is cap fully capable of providing an estimate. Right. Okay. Well, you, you got to make sure that estimate is the same on the same page with Troy Dolan, don't you? Um, the Alexanders have asked us for a ballpark figure, and this is what, uh, you know, what we're working for. You know, first of all, we have to have a plan that that's acceptable, uh, right. to, to them and to us and to serves our community. Um, the, the expertise between, uh, is, Duncan believes that the expertise lies with Steve Town on with, with regard to to whether this is possible and how to do it. Okay, well, probably enough said the better on this sticky situation. <laughs> uh, but anyway, this is the project that started way back when that all of a sudden a whole bunch of cooks got in the kitchen, correct? Oh yeah. Well, well. Um, Cooks can get into the kitchen. Um, you know, we cannot make their. You know, uh, I've been worried all along uh, what we can develop, how fast we can develop it. You know, I've been sounding out, uh, trying to find out uh, what does she really need, when does she need it by, uh, things like that. Um, and she, you know, I, I, there's lot, lots of encouragement. I, I've sent the correspondence to Brian. I don't know what, what you what you think of this. No, I think that's a fair assessment. That uh, did I get this stuff? No uh, grant program. This is a family that's interested in doing something for the town. So it, it's a little, you know, a, a little uh, seat of the pants sometimes. Well, the deal is it's getting close to the 11th hour here. It and is. It needs to be done before the hour is upon us. But it, it can't be done without a presentation to, you know, we, we want to go to the rec committee. We want to get some public and and then go to, go to the uh, uh, select board and the select board can decide what they want to do with it. I understand that. But I mean, you, it looks like you're on track to get this done before the end of November. I think so. Good. Um, Go ahead, Nat. So a couple things. Um, one is, you know, is, is what I said when we talked about this before. Um, and it sounds like you've made some good inroads, but really haven't gotten there yet. Is the public input process needs to be really um, robust, and I, I really, and I'll talk to Lisa Cruz about it too. But that meeting that rec committee meeting when you take public feedback really needs to be public really needs to be well um you know it needs to be really clear to everybody because you know when we did the both when we did the bandstand project and when we did the bread oven up project we got people that came in afterwards and said you know i didn't really hear about that and i don't really like how it's happening and it caused i think we can head that off if we just say up front this is your opportunity for feedback before we move forward. By the way, the bread oven and the bands both came out really well. I'm not saying otherwise, but um, the other thing is um, to Walter Pomeroy's point um, at the previous meeting. I want to know. I want to know exactly what naming rights means legally and what it obligates us to. Um, 
I, in my idea of what it means, I'm behind it. And I think that this is a good idea. Um, but Walter raised some pretty strong um, uh, cautions based on his experience. And it just made me want to know what exactly is being agreed to here when we talk about naming rights. And if, you know, in 30 years, something happens and we have to sell the property or something happens, what are the legal ramifications of this obligation? Mm -hmm. Well, my, you know, I'm not an expert on that. Walter has done more than I have. That's one of the reasons why I'm talking to Kelly Frost because they name, they name buildings. And, uh, um, you know, it might be that we, Kelly Frost? pardon? Who's Kelly Frost? She works for the Vermont Studio Center and she is their basic fundraiser now. Uh, okay. She's worked for Leahy's office before. She spent 17 years in Maine working for conservation organizations doing fundraising and things. Yeah. Okay. Well, it'd be great just to have like in black and white, like what are we signing up for here? Oh yeah. I, I would like to know that too, deliberately, you know, um, or, you know, I mean, definitely. Uh, I will say to your, your point about, you know, I'm happy to have the, the process with, with, with the rec committee. And I was hoping that would serve as the public and I don't care how wide they, they do that, but you know, um, it, uh, if we're going to make a grant application and we have to have all the cooks there, uh, it's not going to come through, you know, we're still going to have to be selective and, and choose what's the best project. And we're, we, we need to take good ideas in, you know, I, I'm not opposed to ideas. Yeah. You know, as, long, some, as yeah. long as people have a place to express themselves and we don't have to agree with everything everybody says and somebody's going to not be happy with the outcome perhaps, but um, yeah, I think we're on the same page. Thanks, Doug. Mike? I mean, just think of the taxes for crying out loud. I mean, everybody got one of those booklets. Uh, everybody got all kinds of information about grieving taxes if you didn't like it several things that steps that could be taken and, and then nobody lot nobody did them and then when they get their tax bill then they squawk about it i mean they had more opportunity uh to correct it and they didn't you know uh how much more do we need to do for public input i, I agree with doug has there uh, been a front porch forum that says the town is considering doing this please come to this meeting to give feedback on it well, of course not we don't want to shoot it in the head right now. Why, why is that shooting it in the head? It's asking the community what we want from a community facility. Um, what do we want from a gift? I mean, um, you, you I can that, study this thing to death and then all of a sudden you don't have it. Really. I'm not studying it to death. You're saying that we need to do this really quickly. I'm saying, okay, do this quickly. Just make sure that the public has a chance to chime in and tell us what they think of it. Yeah, I, I, I thought we had, a. I shouldn't have been so sharp on that. I apologize for that. Um, the, we have drafted a volunteer, which is Howard to, who, who drew the first one up to work on this. Uh, we've got another volunteer and uh, um, actually she's not a volunteer. LCPC is paying her to, to be the landscape architect. Uh, we wanted to, we thought that the rec committee ought to be involved and they would, that would be a public process. So um, I didn't think that, that a front porch forum soliciting comments was as good as assembling a committee who, who could work on it, present a project, and then people could comment that based on what they had in front of them. Understood. And I, again, apologize for being, you know. It's okay. <laughs> I hope I never said anything that was offensive. It, and, my, <laughs> and my reply was sharp as well, Doug. So. <laughs> Kyle, what do you think? I'm enjoying just watching other people ask questions about projects for once. <laughs> I mean, honestly, this is what I had hoped for other things that have come up in this community. <laughs> um, Actually, on my screen, Kyle, you're right in the center of Doug oh. and Nat, and the 
the discussion has been going back and forth but right. on each side of you. <laughs> well, that's interesting because Kyle's on my lower left and, and Matt's on the right and you're in the middle. So where am I? <laughs> where you should be on the far right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I could be on the far left depending on your perspective. <laughs> Okay, Are we anyway, ready. But anyway, I, I don't believe in looking a gift horse in the mouth. You know, if, if you've been given something, the thing to do is to, to, to strike while the iron is hot and, and get it done before things change. And uh, I, I think what Doug is doing is, is excellent. Uh, I, I can't guarantee that, that they will find it acceptable, except that I know that they've been very encouraging with what we've been sending them. We haven't sent them a single design. They don't have a single cost. They're worried about what will come through with cost and they'd like to have it by an anniversary or well in advance of an anniversary. Okay. You're, you're doing good, Doug. Did you have anything, Kyle? I didn't. Um, yeah, no, um, sarcasm aside, I, I, yeah, I think this has incredible potential. I, I, um, I, I actually agree with what both both things that are being said. I think we need to to um, yeah. I think this trailhead could, could be a great thing for our community, and I think we should you know strike like you're saying, but also be smart about it, obviously, and make sure that we're we're dotting the i's and crossing the t's and making sure that folks know what's going on. So I think that's important too. Um, I just want to say that, yeah, if this if this is able to to happen, I think it's going to be great. I was picking up some friends of mine that were walking the or hiking the long trail and they were just saying how difficult it actually is to be a hiker in Johnson, like in terms of not having a lot of lodging opportunities, uh, transportation's difficult. And and I fear that, you know, this could be a could potentially be a great way to to be a more uh, outdoor rec friendly community. Um, so I, I, I'm excited. I hope it works out. Absolutely, Kyle. It really has a chance to be something really special. That's yeah. Brian's story and I have had discussions about uh, how we ought to be bringing to our, or um, it's kind of suggestions on my part, but I, I think he's in agreement, how we should be having sessions to tell people what. Uh, what users of a rail trail need and think of this as potential economic development for our community because they need you know food they need uh bathrooms they need uh places to stay and people and i think it's a case being in the middle of the rail trail as built out uh build it they will come here I guess, you know, to, to give you a sense of where I'm kind of coming from with the, with the public feedback, like um, ages ago when we, when we first started building that trailhead facility, um, you know, some work was done. And then somebody said to me, an equestrian said to me, can we have like a hitch for a horse, for some horses and a horse trough? You know, some really simple like device for letting, you know, for, for horses to drink at it. Um, and like, I never would have thought of that in a million years, the rec committee, you know, at the time certainly never would have thought of that because they weren't, they weren't equestrians, but because, you know, this person had the opportunity to give feedback, all of a sudden, like this other idea came to us that was like, oh, that would have been really great if we had thought of that. And it wouldn't have cost a lot of money if we built it into the original design. So that's kind of where I'm coming from. Um, we it, part of this thing, we, we when we went over and, and started studying it, we found out that there uh, uh, they'd actually there is a plumbed spot for a toilet. But uh, and then we started thinking about water and and uh, uh, snowmobile use. You have horse, you have equine use, you have mushers. You know you're going to have to decide what 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 you're serving. And and we're trying to set up this structure and this project. We might actually phase it, you know, like uh, from talking to Kelly, you know, here, here is the project. This is this piece of it. This is this piece. And here's the electrical. So, uh, you know, 
it, it'd be really, it's really a camel's nose under the tent to get the electrical over so that we could have maybe electrified ball fields, lit, lit ball fields, things like that for our rec program. Uh, maybe at some point. Uh, it, 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 it's important, it's not necessary, but uh, we've been trying to fit it with the old mill. Now, mm -hmm. you know, we, we're looking at, you know, if you've got water, how are you gonna get rid of the water? You know, different things like that. You know, it, it, it's, uh, it, there, there is a, a lot to plan for. The, the, there are plans that what part of the major thought on this, uh, other than the structure, and the bathrooms is, is bathroom is, is going to be uh, we've asked the historical society to uh, would they be interested in participating? Let's them show let's show the industry that was Johnson. Let's show Johnson how part of this is to transport them somehow visually into our community and to this is essentially a display board for attracting people to our community and telling them why they ought to go downtown and what there is. Uh, and and it, 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 it's, it'll be the biggest advertisement that we have. Okay. We probably should get going unless there's any further comment on this. Okay. Uh, thank you, Doug. Yeah. Thank you, Thanks, Doug. Doug. Uh, I wanted to bring to the board the thought to approve two proclamations, one uh, acknowledging Ray Gilchrist Day on October 17th, that's his retirement party day, and Brian Krause on October 26th, which would be his re uh, last working day. If the board's uh, inclined to approve those proclamations, I would get something drawn up with the whereas to all their stats uh, and into the office this week and have everybody just stop by and sign it. So move. We have a motion, we have a second. Second. Have a second, any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, the ayes have it. And then Doug, I think you want to talk about the house on School Street and 100C. Yeah, that, that's just an inquiry. Um, Mike, Mike has uh, all these confidential information about the status of negotiations and never reveals his sources. Um, and <laughs> this so, isn't the place to talk about this. <laughs> well, I just want to- You could have got to me offline, I'd answered your question. Yeah, well, I, I just want to know from the town's point of view, for people to know that we're following this and we want to we want to know what's happening. If it's not happening, we want to be an instigator. Sorry, where are we talking about? It's at the it's powerhouse the bridge. bridge. The river house. The river, oh, okay, okay, yep, yep. And I hope that's not, not a true name. Yes. Um, no, we have to follow up on that. that that's on, on, on my slate. Um, that, yeah, I, I've heard a couple of things are moving on it, um, but. Yeah, the foundation. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but no, I, I have I have not followed up like I should on uh, the dilapidated buildings. Hmm. This is beyond dilapidated buildings, though. This is this is a larger concern, but this was also uh, well, cited as a likely candidate for a dilapidated buildings uh, as a, a test case. I think the state's going to take care of this one for us. We don't have to worry about it. Yeah, but we don't want them to pull it out of the river to take care of it. You know, I think the town needs to show concern and be moving. You know, if other we, you know, we don't know what's happening. Mike is giving us assurances, but he hasn't put up a bond on those assurances yet. But I guess what I'm going with that is, we have two other houses right there on Stern Street that nobody will deal with if we don't deal with. Whereas this particular house. If we did nothing, the state's going to take care of it. So I had your money, Doug. I'd put a bond on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's all. All right. Anybody got anything else? I just wanted to, in case you haven't heard, um, 
I've handed the torch of um, Johnson Works president over to Joey Lahuyer. She was um, stepped up to the plate to take over that position. So just so you know. So you got more time now to serve the VLCT. <laughs> yes, how quickly it's filled. But yeah, no, it was great. It was it was a great run. I my big thing was getting a website up and getting sort of Johnson Works on the map and um, communi the communication part. So, um, but yeah, I think she'll do a a great job and has a lot to offer. So that's your go to person for that now. Thank you for doing that, Kyle. Thank you for your service. Yeah, no, it was great. Mm -hmm. Anybody got anything else? If not, I'll offer it a little tongue in cheek, but Kyle, if you did enjoy the work with VLCT, <laughs> our author often asking for uh, representatives from town, Eric served uh, as the chair of their board for a number of years. Um, no, no, no. I was never their chair. Oh, you weren't the chair? <laughs> no. No, okay. No, I served on their board for eight years, I think. But Yeah. yeah. So if you're interested, uh, next time a solicitation comes out asking for nominations, I can forward it to you. Okay. You can forward it to me. <laughs> <laughs> or you can, their fair committee. They're always looking for people to participate on their different committee, policymaking committee. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. No, keep me in the loop. Okay. Thank you. Okay. If we have nothing else, uh, show us adjourned at 10.03. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night.